Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 interpretations of James Bond. The character of James Bond has enjoyed a long, colourful, and contentious history, and not just in the movies. Many times, the rights to portray a character as James Bond have ended up in a court of law. Sometimes producers or writers have changed the character just enough to avoid any legal action. The character portrayed is still essentially James Bond, though. With that in mind, we're going to be taking a look at both the best official and unofficial interpretations of James Bond. Let's get started. Number 10. Matthew Burke, as seen in G.I. Joe The Spy Who Rooked Me is the 16th episode of the original G.I. Joe series. The Bond character is called Matthew Burke. Appropriately, the main villain in the episode is Dr. Mindsbender, who bears more than a passing resemblance to the classic Bond villain, Blofeld. The main plot device is a paralyzing nerve gas, which Burke and the Joes are trying to stop Cobra from possessing. Burke wears a tux, drives a fast car with lots of gadgets, and shamelessly flirts with Lady J. Ultimately, Burke smuggles out the nerve gas, but escapes by using the Joes as decoy. Burke takes all of the credit for the mission being successful, and the Joes are less than impressed. In the end, the episode shows a pretty honest assessment of the flaws in Bond's character. Number 9. James Bond Jr. As seen in James Bond Jr., obviously. James Bond Jr. was an animated series in 1991 and 1992, featuring a main character described as being the nephew of James Bond. Jr. does battle with classic Bond villains such as Dr. No, who is green-skinned, Jaws, and Oddjob. The evil organization that Bond Jr. fights is called Scum, saboteurs and criminals united in mayhem. Jr. also fights alongside a team which includes Q's grandson, as well as a relative of Felix Leiter. James Bond Jr. only lasted one season as a cartoon, however, he did spawn a series of young adult novels and a Marvel comic book series, as well as a Nintendo game. Number 8. Jimmy As seen in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Black Dossier, is a graphic novel by Alan Moore released in 2007. The story takes place in 1958 and focuses on Mina Harker and Alan Quatermain attempting to recover the Black Dossier, a secret history of the now-defunct League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. The Bond character here is simply called Jimmy, but is every bit James Bond, right down to the wall for PPK. Jimmy is portrayed as being a cruel, abusive, womanizing, inept louse. The image is left that James Bond has a long way to go before being considered as one of the great British characters. It would be interesting to see what Mr. Moore thinks of Hogwarts. Number 7. George Lazenby, as seen in On Her Majesty's Secret Service Australian actor George Lazenby was actually the fourth choice to play Bond in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Of course, Australian actor Hugh Jackman was a last-minute replacement for the part of Wolverine in X-Men, so sometimes your last-ditch alternative works out. Not always, though, as in the case of poor Lazenby. Basically, Sean Connery had a falling out with the producers during You Only Live Twice. Roger Moore was considered for the role, but he was filming rival franchise The Saint at the time. A young Timothy Dalton was then approached about the role, but he himself thought he was too young to play it. Lazenby certainly looked the part, but he was seen as little more than a placeholder until a real Bond could be hired. He ultimately did nothing to enhance the role, but nothing to diminish it either. He ended up being like a backup quarterback who is ordered to hand the ball to a runner for one or two plays, while not turning the ball over in the process. Number 6. Peter Sellers, as seen in Casino Royale in 1967. The producers of the 1967 film Casino Royale knew they had little chance of truly competing with the actual film franchise. So they chose a different route, making Casino Royale into a satire starring David Niven as an elder Bond, Peter Sellers as the current Bond, and Woody Allen as the evil young Jimmy, Dr. Noah. The irony is that while casting for Dr. No, Ian Fleming believed Niven would be a superior choice to Sean Connery. The end result was a very uneven satire that seemed equal parts The Pink Panther and Austin Powers. The Casino Royale explodes in the end, and all of the Bonds end up as angels in heaven, except for Alan's Dr. Noah, who descends down into hell. Number 5. Piers Brosnan As seen in GoldenEye, Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough, and Die Another Day Piers Brosnan is technically everything you would expect in a Bond. He absolutely looks the part and has all the gadgets, girls, and action that you would expect a Bond to have. As such, it never really felt like Brosnan was adding anything to the character or effectively making James Bond his own. 
Brosnan really should have asserted the type of creative freedom that he showed when he was on Remington Steel. Overall, Brosnan's Bond movies stand as exactly the type of fun, yet predictable entertainment that a moviegoer would pay to see in a James Bond movie. Number 4. Timothy Dalton As seen in The Living Daylights and License to Kill If Timothy Dalton had been cast in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, the whole Bond franchise might have been healthier overall. Dalton played Bond exactly the way that Fleming wrote the character in his books. Dalton was surly, nasty, and possessed many irredeemable qualities. Unfortunately, after a solidified image of what Bond was supposed to be on film, audiences were just not quite ready for Dalton's dirty 007. Dalton's portrayal does gain high marks on this list, though. Number 3. Roger Moore As seen in Live and Let Die, The Man with the Golden Gun, The Spy Who Loved Me, Moonraker, For Your Eyes Only, Octopussy, and A View to Kill. Roger Moore's greatest sin in the eyes of most Bond fans is not being Sean Connery. Compared against Connery, most everyone would fall short. Nevertheless, Moore's Bond was the defining Bond for a generation of moviegoers. With Moore's Bond, you started to see a loosening up of the franchise. He was more of a gentleman and also was statistically more willing to bed beautiful women. Later Bonds appear just as ready to ape Moore's interpretation as Connery's. Again, Moore was not Sean Connery, but Moore still managed to make his own indelible mark on the series. Number 2. Daniel Craig As seen in Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, and Spectre. By 2006, audiences were finally ready to accept a Bond closer to what Ian Fleming envisioned. Daniel Craig's Bond does not always come off as a good guy. He's not nearly as refined as Moore or as cinematic as Brosnan. Craig gives you a Bond who is learning on the job and who will make colossal mistakes in the process. Craig's Bond is a Bond who will bleed. Combine this with the depth and range that Daniel Craig possesses as an actor, and you end up with a potent combination. Craig's Bond exists in a universe where you cannot tell who the bad guys are simply by looking at them. That alone makes you believe that the universe this Bond exists in is actually our own. Number 1. Sean Connery As seen in Dr. No, From Russia With Love, Goldfinger, Thunderball, You Only Live Twice, Diamonds Are Forever, and Never Say Never Again. Bond. James Bond. Sean Connery did not have a lot of lines in Dr. No, but Connery's greeting helped to draw everything out of what he had. It also helped define the character for moviegoers. To many, there is literally one James Bond to exist, and that is Sean Connery. His Bond is iconic, despite all the ridiculous scenarios he has thrown into. Connery's Bond is the measuring stick by which decades of the character are now judged. Ian Fleming was reportedly completely against the casting. Connery himself was antagonistic and often fought with the producers. By the time the relationship between Connery and EON Productions ended, the relationship really needed to end. That does not in any way diminish the magic that their relationship created. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please do give us a like below. It helps out. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day. If you enjoyed this list about James Bond, you'll probably enjoy a couple of our other videos. One over there is the top 10 time travel movies. And below that, we've got the top 10 reasons that Disney is better than Pixar. And that one's a pretty controversial one, so worth a watch. And thank you very much for watching.